Hi, fourth grade. Mrs. Pakora here, back for our installment of Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing. So, I'm back at home. So, if you hear a little bit of snoring once again, it is not me. It is my puppy, Winston. As you can see, he's sleeping soundly on the couch. Sometimes you might hear him snore. He does like story time, but he's just a little tired. So, when we last left off Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, Fudge got picked to be in the Toddle Bite commercial, and I think Peter was a little jealous because he kept saying things like, well, he can't even talk, he cut his hair, he doesn't have teeth, so I think he was a little jealous. So let's read on and see what happens in Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing by Judy Blue. Oops. So they're still at the advertising agency. When I was safely inside, I looked at myself in the mirror. I wish Fudge had never been born, I thought. Everything good always happens to him. If he had to be born, I wish he could be nine or ten like me. The Mr. Vincent wouldn't want him to be the one to ride the toddle bike in his commercial. Janet sent down to the coffee shop for some sandwiches and drinks. After we ate, we all walked to another section of the agency where the cameras were set up. A make-believe street scene was the background. The toddle bike was shiny red. My father told Fudge all he had to do was ride it around. Fudge liked that. He zoomed all over the place. Vroom, 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 he called. My father, Mr. Vincent, and Janet sat on folding chairs and watched the action. I sat on the floor at my father's side. Mr. Denberg was the director. He said, okay, Fudge, we're ready to begin now. You ride the toddle bike where I tell you, and I'll take a picture of you doing it, all right? No, Fudge said. What does he mean, Hatcher? Mr. Vincent asked, why did he say no? My father groaned. Look, George, using fudge was your idea, not mine. Mr. Denberg tried again. Okay, fudge, this is it. The cameraman said, start riding this way. Ready, set, go. Fudge sat there on the toddle bike, but he wouldn't pedal. Come on, kid, let's go. The cameraman called. No, don't want to. Fudge answered. What's with this kid, Mr. Hatcher? The cameraman asked. Fudge, my father said. Do what the nice man tells you to. No, don't have to. Janet whispered to my father. How about some cookies, Mr. Hatcher? Good idea, Janet, my father told her. I have some Oreos right here, she said, patting her pocketbook. Shall I give them to him? One at a time, my father said. Janet walked across the room to Fudge. He was still sitting on the toddle bike. If you do what the nice man says, you can have a cookie, Janet told him. Show me, Fudge said. Janet held up a box of Oreos. She was really well prepared, I thought. She must eat all day long. What with the crackers shaped like goldfish and a whole box of Oreos, too. I wondered what else she had in that pocketbook. Gimme, Fudge said. Janet held up one cookie. Fudge reached for it, but Janet didn't let him get it. If you do what the nice man says, you can have an Oreo or maybe even two or three. First cookie, Fudge said. First, do what the nice man says, Janet told him. No, first cookie. Give him one, Janet, Mr. Denberg called. We haven't got all day to fool around. Janet gave Fudge one Oreo. He ate it up. Okay, kid, all ready now, the camera said. You ride over to me. Fudge didn't do it. Mr. Vincent was losing his patience. Hatcher, he hollered. You get that son of yours to ride my toddle bike or I'm taking my whole account away from you and your agency. Must I remind you, George, using fudge was your idea, not mine, my father said. Forget about whose idea it was, Hatcher. He's your kid. You better get through to him now. I have an idea, my father said. He walked to the corner of the room and beckoned to the others. Mr. Denberg and Mr. Vincent gathered around him along with the cameraman and Janet. They looked like a bunch of football players huddled together talking about the next play. Soon, my father called me. Peter, would you join us, please? Sure, Dad, I said. What is it? Peter, we want you to ride the toddle bike for us to show Fudge how it's done. But he already knows how to ride, I said. Didn't you see him zooming around? He won't do it for the cameras, though, my father explained. So we need your help. Will I be in the commercial, too? I asked. Well, the toddle bike is really for young children, Mr. Denberg said. Otherwise, we'd have you do it in a minute. I got the message. It was like buying the shoes and like at Dr. Brown's office. They were going to use me to get Fudge to do what they wanted him to do. I wondered how anybody would ever manage my brother without my help. 
I walked over to Fudge and told him I was going to ro- ride the Toto bike. Get off, I said. Fudge held on to the bike. No, mine! It's not yours, my father told him. But Fudge wouldn't move for anything. He closed his eyes and screamed. Can he scream loud when he tries? So my father had to pull him off the title, Toto bike. Fudge kicked and kept screaming. And I'll bet Mr. Vincent was sorry that he ever spotted my brother in the first place. I got on the toddle bike. It was so small, my knees practically touched the ground, but I managed to ride it around just where the cameraman told me. See how nice Peter can ride the toddle bike? Janet said, here, Peter, come have an Oreo. You did that so well, you can have two or three if you want. Fudge stopped screaming. Me, he said. What, my father asked him. Me, ride, me. You can't ride as well as Peter can. Mr. Denberg said. Can so, Fudge told him. I don't think so, said Mr. Denberg. You already had a turn. You didn't do what I told you. Me! You want to try again? My father asked. Again, Fudge said. Again, again, again! Well, I don't know, Mr. Denberg said. Well, Mr. Vincent said, chewing on his cigar. Well, the cameraman said, scratching his head. Please, Fudge begged. I had never heard my brother say please before. Mr. Denberg said, okay, we'll give you one more chance. Fudge ran to the toddle bike. I got off and he jumped on. Now, he asked Mr. Denberg. Now, Mr. Denberg said, ride this way, Fudge, over here toward me. Fudge did as he was told. Just like Peter, he said. See, just like Peter. Janet gave me a kiss on the cheek. You saved the day, Peter Hatcher, she said. When she wasn't looking, I wiped off my face. Her kiss was too juicy. Chapter nine, just another, oh, sorry, boys and girls, rainy day. The next day, it rained. My father asked me how I'd like to go to the movies. Just me, I asked. No, all three of us, he said. Fudge is very young to go, I said. Don't you think so? Maybe, but I can't think of anything else to do with him, and that'll take up a few hours. You could give him some socks, I suggested. You know how he loves to play with your socks. Socks won't last the whole afternoon, my dad said. That's why I thought of the movies. What do we see, dad? My father checked his New York magazine. A bear's life is playing in the neighborhood. How does that sound? What's it about, I asked. A bear's life, I guess, my father said. It's rated G. I was thinking of a good western with lots of actions or else a picture rated R where you can't get in if you're under 17 unless you're with your parents. But my father has made up his mind. A bear's life it was. I suggested that my father get Fudge cleaned up because by then he was looking kind of messy. I don't think my father even put him into his pajamas last night. He's been wearing the same polo shirt ever since my mother left yesterday morning. By one o'clock we were ready to go. All three of us wore raincoats and boots, and my father took his big black umbrella. One thing about New York, it's hard to get a cab when it's raining, but the movie theater wasn't very far away. My father said the walk would do us all good. There were a lot of puddles. It was really pouring. I like to walk in the rain, especially if it isn't too cold out. It feels nice when it wets your face. I jumped over the puddles. My father avoided them too, but not budge. He jumped right into everyone and splashed around like a little duck. By the time we got to the movie theater, the bottom of his pants were soaked. My father took him into the men's room and stuffed a bunch of paper towels up each pant leg so Fudge wouldn't have to sit around wet. At first, Fudge complained. But when my father bought him a big box of popcorn, he forgot about his stuffed pants. Right after we got settled in our seats, a big boy sat down in front of Fudge, so he had to change seats with my father. Now he was on the aisle, I was in the middle, and my father was on the other side. When the lights dimmed, Fudge said, ooh, dark. I told him, be quiet. You can't talk in the movies. Okay, Peter, he said. That's when he started throwing his popcorn. At first, I didn't notice, but I wondered why people in front of us were turning around every second. Then I heard Fudge whisper, pow, 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 and I saw him throw a handful of popcorn. I poked my dad. He's throwing his popcorn, I whispered. My father reached across me and tapped Fudge on the leg. If you throw one more piece, I'm going to take it away from you. No throw, Fudge said very loud. Shh, said the people in front of us. Shh, Fudge said back to them. 
All right, boys and girls, we're going to continue tomorrow with Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing. Bye-bye.